A traffic accident early Saturday morning takes the lives of two people from Heflin. Dry weather and seasonal temperatures return to East Alabama this week. We'll have the complete forecast details coming up. Coming up in sports, it is that time of the year. It's 2024, which means it's time for new region alignments in high school sports. We've got the preview of all of the new region alignments coming up. EA and Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Mike Stedham. And I'm Katie Edwards. A Heflin couple was killed early Saturday morning in the crash on I-20 east of Oxford. State troopers said Anthony Finley, 58, and Kimberly Finley, 59, of Heflin, were pronounced dead at the scene of that accident. It happened just after 2 a.m. Saturday, three miles east of Oxford. Troopers said the Finley's car struck another vehicle before leaving the roadway and hitting an embankment and multiple trees. An investigation into that accident is ongoing. The body of a duck hunter whose kayak capsized on Lake Guntersville Saturday morning has been recovered. Officials say 22-year-old Brooks Hardy's body was recovered about 3.30 this morning near the Goose Pond Resort. Hardy, who lived in Georgia, graduated from Bremen High School in 2021 and played baseball for Sneed State Community College before graduating this past spring. Around 8 a.m. Saturday, Hardy was duck hunting from a kayak on Lake Gunnersville when his kayak capsized. The Cleburne County Sheriff's Department is seeking the public's assistance in identifying the owner of the pickup truck in this picture. Occupants of that truck are wanted for questioning in connection with the burglary that occurred in the 5000 block of County Road 65 in Fruithurst. If you have any information, please contact Investigator Howell at 256-463-2277, extension 104. When we return, Anniston will close off part of Noble Street tomorrow for repaving. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. The intersection of 11th and Noble Streets in downtown Anniston will be closed tomorrow and Wednesday so those streets can be repaved. The closure will begin approximately 4.30 Tuesday morning and the road should be reopened sometime Wednesday afternoon or evening. Barricades and LED road signs will guide traffic around the closed area. If you would like to do less wrapping this week and also help a good cause, the Calhoun County YMCA will have a volunteer gift wrapper at Martin's Family Clothing on Friday and Saturday from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. and on Sunday from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. For a donation, they will make your presents look like they've just arrived from the North Pole. You may call the Y at 256-238-9622 for details. When we come back, we have more seasonal decorations to show you. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. 
Last week, we challenged you to send us pictures of great Christmas decorations in East Alabama, and tonight we feature the display setup at the future home of the Old Noble in downtown Anniston. We also got nice shots of the city's Christmas tree on Noble Street next to the old federal courthouse, which will become Anniston City Hall in about a year. Keep the pictures coming, and we'll feature them on our newscast throughout the week. And it's a great week to go out and just look at those and it feels like uh, Christmas because it's going to be, as you know, cold and getting a little bit colder, I believe. Well, there's only one way to find out for sure, and that's for us to check with John Holder, who joins us now in the EAN Weather Center. John? Mike and Katie, it is going to be cold the next two or three days, but as we make our way toward Christmas time, the temperatures are going to be warm. We'll have the complete forecast for the week ahead coming up. For metal buildings in Alabama and the southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing serving the entire southeast. Give them a call today. Plenty of sunshine today across East Alabama. Breezy out there this afternoon. 55 for the high today. Right about our average for this time of year. The morning low this morning, 38. Again, pretty close to our average. And the record high temperature, 76 degrees. The record low at 16. And those days continue to be shorter. Our first day of winter and our shortest day of the year is coming up on Thursday. The sun rising at 643 tomorrow morning and the sun setting this evening at 438. Weather on your street on a Monday night. Going to take out to Dennis Street on the west side of Jacksonville. Tonight, the cold air is going to be pouring in. We're going to see winds tonight, 15 to 20 miles per hour, gusting as high as 30 at times. That will be a north wind, and that is going to be a cold wind. This will be one of the coldest nights we've had so far this season. 23 for the low tonight under clear skies. Tomorrow, a cold day coming up. Take out to Hockey, uh, Rocky Hollow Road on the east side of Anniston. Sunny and cold tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine. That's not the problem, but the high tomorrow is going to be well below average 47 for the high coming up tomorrow. And as we take a look at the rest of the week, some themes coming to the forecast. You see a lot of numbers here. It's going to be warmer each day down on Gray Street in Midtown Oxford. We go from the 40s tomorrow to the 50s by the middle part of the week. And by the end of the week, we are going to be in the 60s. So some rapid changes coming, but no rain fall in the forecast all the way through the work week as we count down the days to Christmas time. Let's take a look now at the seven day forecast and you're going to see a big stretch of dry weather. We need some rainfall. The drought continues, but no rainfall coming this week, folks. 47 on Tuesday, 55 Wednesday, back to 60 Thursday, 62 on Friday. And as we begin the Christmas holiday weekend in earnest this weekend, 62 on Friday, uh, uh, 62 on Saturday, Sunday for Christmas Eve, going to bring a chance of rainfall in. Maybe not during the day Sunday, but for Christmas Eve and Santa Claus coming to town, might be a few rain showers out there. It's going to be warm on Christmas Eve with a high at 61. And then, unfortunately, it looks like we may have a rather wet Christmas Day coming up. One week from today will be Christmas Day, a 60% chance of rain, and the high will be in the upper 50s, so we'll be a little bit above average for temperatures. No white Christmas once again here in East Alabama. Taking a look at the temperatures, they're going to be rising as well for nighttime lows. We're back up in the upper 40s for the low by Christmas morning. And we'll see that increase 40s by Sunday and we go backwards and we're seeing 23, 24, 26. If you want to be in the Christmas spirit as far as weather goes, you're going to have to celebrate that in the next three mornings because once we get past about Friday morning, it's really not going to feel like Christmas at all across East Alabama. Let's take a look at those low temperatures coming up and what's responsible for all these low temperatures and what's responsible for all of this sunshine and dry weather. Well, H's, we've got high High pressure dominating the entire country. You have to go all the way back up here to the Great Lakes in the Northeast. You have to go all the way back out to the Mountain West and the West Coast to find any rainfall. The rest of the country, we're all under the domination of high pressure, and that's going to remain that way all week long until we get into about
about Sunday. That's why we've got some seasonal temperatures and also the reason we have these, uh, the sunshine all across East Alabama. I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for your breakfast and morning forecast. In the meantime, it's sports time now. Here's Namath Pitts. Thanks, John. The Alabama High School Athletic Association released their region alignments for the 2024 and 2025 football season. There are a couple teams that made the move up in a classification, while others dropped. Some local teams go from south to north. We have the full preview for you right now, starting in Class 1A. In Class 1A Region 6, a little bit of a shift here. Woodland drops from Class 2A, but it really it's a lot of the same. But also Fayetteville dropping from Class 2A. So Fayetteville and Woodland move from 2A to 1A. Talladega County Central, Donahoe, Victory Christian, Wadley, and Winnebra all stay put right there in 1A Region 6. The biggest winner in this region, in my opinion, is the Woodland Bobcats. The biggest loser in this region is, uh, I don't really know that there is one, to be honest with you, based off most of these teams were in a region the year before. Moving on in Class 1A in Region 8, Spring Garden goes from that Region 6 with some South teams kind of, meaning they were traveling a little Southern to play. Now they go Northern. Eider drops from 2A as they go in that region. You've got Appalachian, Gillsville, Eider, Raglan, Spring Garden, Valleyhead, and Woodville. Again, the biggest winner here has got to be uh, Spring Garden getting to play more northern teams. You could say Eider dropping from Class 2A. The biggest loser, I wouldn't really say there is one because most of these teams were already playing each other. Let's move to Class 2A Region 4. B.B. Comer is now in 3A. Realtown takes their spot. A little bit of the same. Central Coosa, Horseshoe Bend, Lafayette, Lynette, Ramburn, Realtown, Lochapoca. Uh, the biggest winner in this region is obviously Realtown. They move over, uh, you know, biggest loser. Uh, I would probably say the biggest loser in this region is uh, Central Coosa being put right back in there with all those other teams in Class 2A. That is Class 2A Region 4. Class 2A Region 6, Coosa Christian, the defending state runner-ups, move up to Class 2A, where they are now in a region with Cleveland, Cold Springs, Falkville, Southeastern, Susan Moore, and West End. The biggest winner in this region, I would have to say Coosa Christian, moving up from 2A, or from 1A to 2A. You don't know what region you could put in, but this is still a very winnable region for Coosa Christian, the biggest loser in this region. Uh, again, I don't know that there really is one personally, maybe Cold Springs if I had to pick. Class 2A Region 7, it's Cedar Bluff, Gaston, North Sand Mountain, Pisgah, Pleasant Valley, Sand Rock, and Section. The biggest winner is Pisgah. They don't have to play Fife anymore. And again, loser-wise, I don't really know that, again, there is one. Uh, maybe Cedar Bluff moving up from 1A to 2A. Uh, you could say them, but still a winnable region for any of these teams. Pleasant Valley stays put in 2A Region 7. Moving up to Class 3, Region 4, we told you B.B. Comer was moving north. They do. They're going to, or excuse me, moving up to 3A. It's B.B. Comer, Beulah, Childersburg, Dadeville, Glenwood, Lee Scott Academy, and Randolph County. The biggest winner in this region, I would say, is, is probably going to be uh, Randolph County and Dadeville. Uh, the biggest losers, Glenwood and Lee Scott Academy. You go from, go from AISA to the AHSAA, and you get put in a region with some tough teams in B.B. Comer, uh, Beulah, Dadeville, Randolph. County, very physical teams. 3A Region 6 is all local. And Welburn moves up from the south. Weaver moves up from the south. Sachs moves up to the south. Class 3 Region 6 is Glencoe, Locust Fork, Ohatchee, Piedmont, Sachs, Welburn, Weaver, and Westbrook Christian. If you're going based off travel, this is a win. But my losers in this region are Sachs, Welburn, and Weaver. You go from arguably one of the weakest regions in the state of Alabama to one of the strongest regions in the state of Alabama. And uh, my winner in this region, again, is I, there really isn't one. Uh, but if I'm Steve Smith, I'm looking at these re these teams that are a little down they're still good programs but a little down compared to the previous four to five years and if I'm Steve Smith I'm licking my chops looking at this region in class 3 region 6. In class 4A region 3 it's Bibb County, Booker T. Washington, Bullock County, Hanley, St. James, Talladega, Tallahassee, and West Blockton. Biggest loser in my opinion in this region is Hanley. The travel that they're going to have to do going to Bibb County, Booker T. Washington, Bullock County, St. James, Talladega, Tallahassee, West Blockton. The closest game right there is either Talladega or Tallahassee. Still some long trips. Their gate is certainly going to hurt. And uh, I look at Hanley as, and, and Talladega as the biggest losers. And, and then winning-wise, I mean, look, I, 
I don't know that there is one in this region because if you're Bibb County, you got Booker T. Washington, Hanley, St. James, Tallahassee. Again, if you're Booker T. Washington, you get rid of Montgomery Catholic, but you pick up Hanley, Bibb County right there, St. James. I mean, just tough. Class 4A Region 3. Class 4A Region 6, how about this? It's a nine-team region. We have never seen this happen right here in East Alabama. It's happened across the state of Alabama, but not in East Alabama. But it's Alexandria dropping from Class 5A to 4A. Asheville, Cherokee County, Cleburne County moving from the south to north. Etowah, Coach Scott Peavy's team right there. Hoax Bluff moving from 3A to 4A. Montford, Oniana, White Plains. The biggest winner in this region, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I don't even think it's... Alexandria, I think it's Scott Peavy at Etowah. Looking at who you've got, I think he's in a good position in terms of good local competition. I think Scott Peavy staying right there in that 4A region was big for them. For Alexandria, they are young. I still think there's some tough competition here. Uh, you know, again, looking across the board, but definitely a winnable region for Alexandria. Biggest loser is White Plains. They lost on this one. This sucks. This stings. Rumors are going to 3A, and you get put right in here with a nine team region with a defending state runner up in class 4A Cherokee County. You get Etowah who you know is going to be better. Hoax Bluff's good. Aniana's good. I mean just unbelievable class 4A region 6. Class 5A region 4 a little bit of the same pretty much the same. It's Beauregard, Central Clay, Elmore County, Holtville, Marbury, Sylacauga, and Valley. Not a lot changes here. It's pretty much the same. Central Clay will be the favorite. Next up in Class 5A, how about this? The Jacksonville Golden Eagles expected to move up to 5A, but a little bit of a surprise here. Look who's joining them, the Aniston Bulldogs. That's right, the Aniston Bulldogs. And uh, the, whoo, Coach Jackson's team going up to 5A. They get Aniston and again in Jacksonville together with Leeds, Lincoln, Moody, Springville, St. Clair County. You pretty much take out Alexandria. You take out Southside, you put in Jacksonville and Aniston. This is going to be one heck of a Class 5A Region 6. Now we move up to Class 6A Region 6. The Oxford Yellow Jackets, this region is the exact same, except you get rid of center point, and in my opinion, you'd pick up an even tougher team in Mountain Brook. My biggest loser in this region is everybody because they get Mountain Brook added. You lose center point and get Mountain Brook. It's going to be a tough region for Sam Adams' team. Pretty much the same, except now you add Mountain Brook. And the final region is 6A Region 8. For the first time ever, we will get Southside Gadsden and Gadsden City. And what a game that's going to be. They're in a region together in Class 6A, along with Mae Jemison, R.E. Lee Huntsville, Hazel Green, Fort Payne, and Buckhorn. Class 6A Region 8 again, Buckhorn, Fort Payne, Gadsden City, Hazel Green, R.E. Lee Huntsville, Mae Jemison, Southside. My biggest winner in this region uh, is truthfully going to be Southside, believe it or not, moving up from 5A to 6A. I think this is a winnable region for them. And and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this shapes out. And that's it for all the region alignments for the 2024-2025 football seasons. And that's it for EA and local sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for that update, Namath. And thank you for watching us today. You can find us here online every weekday on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and our website, eastalabamanow.com. Just go to our video feed, watch us when it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Tuesday for your news on your schedule.